Hi, this is Janine Ferrara from Douglas Elliman on Long Island and in Manhattan with the June issue of Sell and Dwell, your guide to buying, staging, and selling your home. Today's edition, we're going to be talking about a topic I get a lot of questions about, hardwood floors. Whether installing floors for resale or if you've just moved in, hardwood floors are a great option for homes and apartments. So with all the available choices, I thought it might be helpful to have a primer on wood flooring basics, trends in today's markets, and look-alike alternatives. Both solid and engineered wood floors are considered hardwood and can be advertised as such when selling a home, so they both have excellent resale value. While solid hardwood is one piece of wood, engineered wood is a layered product with a thin piece of hardwood on top of a base of high-quality plywood. Solid wood can last decades and is extremely durable. It can also be sanded down multiple times, but its downfall is moisture. If water damage from flooding occurs, it is possible for a solid wood floor to be salvaged, but it will never return to its former shape. That makes solid hardwood ideal for most living areas, except bathrooms and basements. Engineered wood has a thin surface so it can become chipped or delaminated if stressed beyond normal conditions. On the plus side, engineered wood holds up much better to moisture. It too can be sanded down, but only once or twice before the top layer becomes too thin. Solid hardwood offers a few more species options than engineered wood, with red and white oak, maple, hickory, and pine as the most popular solids. Options are slightly less for engineered woods, with red oak, hickory, and Brazilian cherry used most frequently. Solid hardwood floors are installed with nails, staples, or glue. The unfinished planks are usually stained and then covered with a protective finish on site. Pre-finished solid wood planks are also available. Engineered wood is usually pre-finished before installation and then installed. Unlike solid hardwood floors, engineered wood can be installed on a floating basis and some installation is as simple as clicking planks together. At the end of the day, purists will lean towards solid wood for a return on investment down the road, while engineered will appeal to folks with a practical bent in terms of cost and installation. If you're thinking about resale anytime within the next 10 to 15 years, your goal should be to select colors, textures, and designs that are considered contemporary and give a feeling of modernity to a home, but will also stand the test of time. Dark floors are an elegant choice for many, and for those who love dark floors, the options will trend even darker. Think dark walnut and espresso. In general, darker floors will make a room appear smaller and show every ounce of dust. While popular in the last decade, its appeal is expected to wane in coming years in favor of lighter colors. Gray flooring is expected to become a new classic option in floor color. Based on the staying power of gray in home decor, I'm guessing gray floors are going to continue to be a safe bet for the foreseeable future. And for those who find gray a little stark, gray flooring with brown undertones, often called grayish, are a nice middle ground for those who like to have their gray with a little warmth beneath it. Light floors make a room look larger and airier, and we've been seeing its popularity grow. That interest is also expected to increase over the next 10 to 15 years. Light blondes will be in vogue, but definitely fading out are yellow-toned oak shades and cherry tones. But if blonde is too pale for you, look for a color called honey. It's a slightly darker blonde with brown undertones. I like to think of it as dirty blonde, although no one's going to sell you a floor with the word dirty in it. Nevertheless, when trying to think about these nuances and colors, thinking about the equivalents in hair color might be helpful. On the West Coast, the bleached, white, beachy looking floors continues to gain momentum, but we haven't seen as much interest in that extreme on the East Coast yet. Once you've decided on color, you will be presented with options on finishes. Gone are the days of the basketball court shine. Flat and oiled finishes are preferred. While keeping a simple, smooth texture will always be a classic choice, we're seeing a lot more options for texture. On the opposite end of smooth is a distressed texture which looks like it's been beaten up a bit. You'll see scrapes, burns, knots, warm holes, and more. But if the antique finish is a little too extreme, you may want to consider wire brushed finishes which show subtle intentional wire scratches that are exposed to the surface. Another option is hand scraped, which features long ingrained scrapes and variations in each of the planks to appear both handcrafted and unique. For standing the test of time, my money is on hand scraped. 
Finally, you need to consider pattern. The width of standard wood planks was traditionally two and a half inches, but in recent years, we're seeing wider planks, anywhere from five to eight. We're also seeing the use of mix of different sized planks. Alongside of that, manufacturers are also now increasing the length of the planks. All of these size options increase the variety of patterns and looks you can create in a room. Many homeowners are now laying their planks horizontally and also in chevron and herringbone patterns. Speaking of patterns, where does parquet fit in here? Parquet literally means pattern, and while your first thought of parquet might be those 12 by 12 square tiles so often used in apartments, there's actually a lot more you can do with parquet floors. Intricate designs, patterns, and colors can all be used to make a floor the true showpiece in a room, and will likely be seen in high-end homes. While parquet floors are a great way to show your individuality, keep in mind that anytime you use an intricate pattern, you stand the chance of turning off potential home buyers who might not have the same attraction to the visual stimulation on their floors. So use parquet judiciously if resale is on your horizon. While we've established that hardwood floors are a great investment and truly add value to a home, sometimes they're just not a possible option. Fortunately, there are now a number of faux options that can be explored to get that great hardwood look without actual wood. A terrific option for the wood look is porcelain tile. Ideal for basements, baths, and kitchens, tile is the second most popular flooring option after wood, so it will help with resale. The tiles are waterproof and easy to clean, and they can even be textured to look distressed. Stick to cool colors such as gray and white, and you'll get a contemporary look with a vintage flair. Vinyl has become the standout star in recent years. It looks and feels like real wood, is waterproof, and has cork underlayment for insulation and cushioning. Plus, vinyl floors are floating, which means that they can go on top of virtually any type of surface, including tile, as long as the surface is flat and level. Today's laminate is not your grandmother's cheesy laminate. Again, thanks to technology, today's laminate is an affordable way to get the hardwood look. It can also be hand scraped or distressed for a realistic texture that's waterproof, easy to care for, and a truly affordable option for homeowners. I hope this primer was helpful, and a special shout out to my friend Sammy Jo and her puppies Oxley and Riley, who inspired this topic as we shopped for flooring for her new apartment. She ended up with engineered hardwood, with mixed sized planks, hand scraped in a grayish look, and it looks amazing. As always, if you need help buying, staging, or selling a home, go to my website, janineferrara.element.com, or give me a call. Home, let me help you get there.